afternoon. I'm joined with one of my childhood heroes and one of some, I can't believe I'm joined with a man. How can I state this? A NASCAR legend in the business, James Hilton. How are you doing this afternoon, James Hilton? Well, thank you very much. That's uh, that's one heck of a build up, and I you know I appreciate that. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, I mean, it's really an honor to have you on because as a kid, I always looked up to you and. and I, Having you on here, it's one of the biggest guests I've ever had on my website. Thanks again for joining me. Um, I have so many questions I'd like to ask you uh, about your career and your comeback. First off, uh, wow, uh, you're coming back uh, this uh, the uh, the upcoming race, uh, Daytona, uh, Daytona 100, maybe hopefully, and you're already tested for the Arca race, right? Uh, yes, so I had a, I'm driving a car uh, that belongs to. Uh, a fellow racer John Carter mm-hmm. in the uh, lower the upper part of uh, Georgia, Tacoa, Georgia, just across the line from South Carolina, has a first rate uh, Dodge Charger mm-hmm. that he purchased from Bill Elliott. In fact, Bill Elliott drove it last year in the Cup Series, and uh, this is a t- state of the art car. We tested 18th out of uh, 64 test cars. Wow. And uh, now it's in, uh, we're doing some uh, modification on it and uh, fixing up what we think we need to run the race with and going with the uh, Ernie Elliott engine. Wow. And uh, uh, we definitely got a front-running car. If I can just get the job done, we'll have a lot of fun. Wow, I hope, man. That'd be the greatest thing ever if you won the race. Uh, it says here, right? They give you like three decades since you won, or so you ever won since 1972. I'm gonna get to that 1972 Talladega 100 in a second, but you know, first I asked, you you're coming in 2008. We are right now, but you started all the way back in 1964, and you were actually started before that as a crew chief for Rex White. How did that happen? Well, I was uh, working with Rex White. We started with Rex White in 1960 wow. as a mechanic, and went on to be a crew chief, and then. Uh, um, in 64, I was working for um, Ned Jarrett as his crew chief, and in um, 65, I was crew chiefing for, uh, um, I was trying to think of uh, Hutch, and Pay, uh, Hutch and Dick Hutcherson, mm-hmm. and then in 66, I started driving my own car and went on to finish second in the points and uh, come real close to winning the championship. And, wow, it says that you finished runner-up like three times for the uh, championship. Now, do you think if you had the support from the factory-based support and support from sponsors, do you think you would have won multiple championships? I feel like I would with the the running, being third in the championship um, three times and was four times third. We was always up in the front, but we're totally independent. We pick up a sponsor every once in a while, but it was a very low keyed sponsorship, and uh, you know it was like a one uh, one armed man almost. You know, just uh, fighting the odds. Uh, yeah, I feel like deep in my heart, if I'd have had uh, some factory factory help and um, you know full fledged backing, uh, yeah, we'd have won a bunch of races. I'm sure of that. Wow, and. It's a shame you only won two races, but you finished second. I don't know how many times, and you have 301 top 10 finishers out of 601 starts. That's amazing, uh, really. Your last uh, race, it says here, it says 1993, and you're coming back in 2008. Um, you attempted the Daytona 100 last year. That was awesome. You almost made it. But uh, what, did, what did people say when you attempted the race last year, the, the I saw you on television on uh, ABC, I think it was. The people I asked, like, holy uh, holy cow, this man's attempt in a race. Uh, what, the, what, what was the reaction? Well, it, uh, I think it was just a breath of fresh air, what it mm-hmm. turned out to be in NASCAR racing, that, uh, you know, you've got uh, uh, young kids now, 19, 18, 19, 20-year-old, mm-hmm. uh, running the circuit and, and winning. Um uh, and they just kind of got, I think he just got a little bit of ho-hum. And I'm not taking nothing away from young young guys. That, uh, that's where it's at. Youth, you cannot beat youth in any sport. Mm-hmm. And uh, the only thing I was running on was a 
adrenaline and and experience. Mm -hmm. And um, we came with him four laps, three laps, I believe it was, of uh, of making uh, of qualifying for that race. And you know the as they say the uh, fickle hand of fate some kind of gets you. We had a caution flag eight laps to go. Mm -hmm. I was locked into a nine-car drift. There's no way I was going to be out of that, uh, you know, that uh, mm -hmm. race at that point. But then uh, restarted the race with three laps to go, and I had a faulty clutch and got a little bit out of line on a restart. And uh, as they say in Daytona, I got they hung me out to dry, but uh, they knew we were there. They it uh, showed that somebody in their 70s. <laughs> Excuse me. Somebody in the seventies can still drive a race car. That's right. And um, I think it was good for NASCAR the fact that my uh, emails and my um, uh, fan uh, rating went up to the point where I was get uh, you know sending out more autographs and racing um, pictures and that uh, sort of thing to uh, more than more so than when I was winning races and running up front all the time. <laughs> And it was the the senior seniors. We didn't, uh, you know, letters from kids and everybody. But the seniors really think enjoyed it. That uh, got an awful lot of fan mail from all across the country. That you know, people fifty plus, and uh, I think the seniors jumped on it more than anybody else. It just uh, uh, made them feel good. That uh, my motto was that. Uh, you know, don't sit on the couch and watch TV. Get out there and do what you want to do, whether it's racing or or uh, playing golf or tennis or whatever your sport is or, you know, whatever. Just because you, uh, you know, you get into your late 50s and 60s, you, you think you got to give up. Um, you know, I'll never give up. I'll just get to where I can't go anymore. But right now, uh, today, I just... Uh, had uh, had a physical so that I can get my NASCAR driver's license, nice. and uh, everything is a okay. My vision is still 2020. Do not wear glasses, contacts, or anything. So I've been blessed. God has blessed me as far as my health and my ability to see and my reflexes. I I uh, I enjoy every second I'm on that racetrack. Wow, that's really awesome. Uh, that this is amazing, really. 73 years old, still at it. That's really, that's really cool. And I uh, hope you can uh, make the Daytona 100 this year. Uh, you, you, your, 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 your best finish, actually, your best finish in the Daytona 100 was third, right? That's right. Yeah, behind, uh, I believe it was Mario Andretti. Wow. Won the race. And, uh, and were you in your own car, right? Yeah. And it won part of that race. Well, the last pit stop, I was actually leading the race. It looked like I was going to win and uh, made my pit stop. Under a call, the caution came in uh, uh, about 30 laps to go, or 30 miles to go, and everybody pitted, and I'd be everybody out of the pits and cut a right front down on the way out of the pits. Had to mm -hmm. come back in, and uh, actually they dropped the green as I was leaving the pits. So uh, wound up third and was very fortunate. So uh, we've had some decent runs, and, uh, you know, just uh, – one of those things we never never acquired the sponsorship that we needed, and uh, you just can't run without sponsorship is what plain and simple. But uh, I'm not crying about it. I had a I've had a good long run, and you know if I had to do it all over do again, I'd probably do the same thing. <laughs> That's cool. That's cool. And uh, your first victory came in 1970 in with the Richmond 500, and. Uh, Looks like you won the race and you and you dominated pretty much the race. What happened there? Did you did you just, just pretty much just beat everybody or well how how that how that went to come about? No, they say uh, you know uh, guys like me back in those days. You know, you, if you didn't run up front all the time, whatever they'd label you as a stroker. Mm -hmm. We definitely wasn't stroking. Uh, I think qualified third. Uh, I had just bought a uh, a used uh, Ford race car from Holman Moody that David Pearson had drove with previous year mm -hmm. and um, started third in the race 